Oh, oh there. I know it's someone. It's... Someone there. They opened the door. That's what woke me. I must know who it was. Who's oh, that? It's... Going downstairs. What is it? What happened? Oh, oh, dear, dear. oh dear, dear. Audrey, what's the matter? Uh, down, downstairs. Are you hurt? I think I'm all right. Someone came into my bedroom again. They woke me up. Oh, they couldn't have been anyone, darling. It was someone, Aunt Edna. I know it was. You must have been dreaming. I saw the door close behind them, but I, I rushed out. It was only a horrid nightmare. No, no, it wasn't. Really, it wasn't. I heard them going downstairs, and I ran after them, and then, and then something caught hold of my ankle. Oh, I'm sure you were imagining it. I know it's someone trying to do me harm. Oh, dear. And they're trying to drive me out of my mind. <laughs> BBC presents A Case for Dr. Morell, another adventure by Ernest Dudley, with Cecil Parker as the famous Dr. Morell and Sheila Sim as his secretary, Miss Frail. The Wedding Dress. Oh, that'll be Mrs. Lambert for her appointment. I'd better warn Dr. Morell. If I use ultraviolet light whose wavelength is shorter than that of the visible spectrum... Dr. Morell! Must you interrupt me, Miss Frail? Where was I? Oh, in the middle of some absorbing experiment, I expect. I was. Oh, yes. If the wavelength is shorter than the wavelength of the visible spectrum, then even the finer details uh, should emerge under the microscope. I think it's Mrs. Lambert. Uh, she made an appointment with you at 12 o'clock this morning. Uh, what do you mean, you think, Miss Frank? Uh, don't you know? Oh, uh, uh, that's her at the door. Mrs. Lambert. Are you assuming it to be her, uh, merely because the ring at the door coincides with the time she's expected? Well, I put two and two together, yes. Uh, you'd better go and see if they do make four. Uh, well, I thought I'd just let you know it was her. I I'll go and let her in. Uh, do, Miss Frank. Uh, good morning. I'm Mrs. Lambert. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I mean good morning. Uh, Dr. Morell is expecting me. Yes, I know. Do come in, please. I'll Ooh. tell Dr. Morell you're here. Thank you. At first, I had the idea that this was a case for experts in psychic research, and I nearly went to them. Uh, why didn't you, Mrs. Lambert? I think because it was too close to my niece, and also I couldn't believe it was anything supernatural. I understand. And there is another reason. Uh, I almost invariably find that there is. Audrey is getting married on Saturday. I didn't want to start anything that might cause her any publicity. Uh, the newspapers are worrying her already about the wedding. If there's going to be any wedding now... You anticipate something arising which may prevent it? I don't know what to think, Dr. Morell. Except that the past two weeks have been getting on Audrey's nerves pretty badly. Your niece, Chatty, is of considerable importance to these occurrences. Uh, someone means to stop her marriage taking place. She's certain of it. Uh, do you feel that her fears are justified? Well, who'd want to stop her marrying the man she loves? I haven't the faintest idea. However, <clears throat> you say that both her parents are abroad. Yes, her father and mother are in Salon. Have they raised any objection to her marrying this man? Uh, frankly, I don't think they'd care one way or the other. Uh, they've been rather odd parents. Oh, I suppose you'd say. And ever since she was six years old, I've looked after her. Uh, but I'm sure they'd want her to be happy. Uh, the prospective bridegroom's parents, so what are their feelings on the subject? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fitzgerald are delighted. That seems satisfactory. So is their son, of course. I'm gratified to hear that. I mean, I can't think of anyone who could be against Audrey marrying Johnny Fitzgerald. And yet she persists in this feeling of apprehension. I put it down entirely to her dreams and nightmares, which have been brought about by emotional disturbance. Uh, by the way, she hasn't the faintest idea that I've come to see you. I had rather assumed that. Otherwise, she would have come to consult me herself. I don't mean that Audrey's neurotic or anything like that, but she's worried over the wedding. Uh, I should have imagined that your niece would be filled with anticipatory happiness. Uh, she's deeply in love with Johnny and with her. But she's afraid that something will happen the same as it did before. Uh, what happened before? It was three years ago. Audrey was only 19 and fell in love with Richard Conway. Uh, two weeks before they were to be married, he vanished while mountain climbing in sky, and he was never seen again. I never thought she'd get over it. Uh, the youthful heart is fairly resilient. A year ago, she met Johnny, uh, but now she's scared something will happen again. And, well, uh, well, perhaps I shouldn't. Uh, what were you going to say? Well, nothing really, only that I think she'll be much happier with Johnny. Richard was terribly jealous. He and Audrey had frightful rows because of it. 
In what way do you think I could help your niece? Well, if you could convince her that all this is her imagination, uh, perhaps prescribe some sedative. Dr. Morell. Uh, what is it, Miss Frail? Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but there's a phone message from Mrs. Lambert. For me? It's your housekeeper. Mrs. Veazey? She was the only one who knew I'd be here. Uh, what does she want? It's about your niece. What's happened? Um, there's been an accident. An accident to Audrey? Oh, what's happened? What's happened? <laughs> Lambert here. What happened to Audrey? She's all right. She's all right. Oh, thank heaven. It was the car in the garage. She went into the garage by the side door and Ace was there working on the car. She thought he heard her, but he couldn't. Good morning, Ames. You still having trouble with that plug? Oh, he hasn't heard me. Uh, where is that? Is it petrol for cleaning? One of these shelves somewhere. Oh, that's so... What is Ames doing? Could you stop the engine for a bit? You can't hear me. Ames! Oh, he's back in the car! Ames, stop! Stop, I'm behind you! Ah! Oh, thank heavens, you've stopped. So sorry, miss. I didn't know you were there. Oh, I, I thought you were going to crush me against the wall. Oh, I never heard you come in, miss. It's all right. Then I heard you screaming and I realized... Are you sure you're all right, Miss Templeton? Oh, she's screaming. Poor darling, she might have been killed. Oh, what a fool Ames was not to have kept a lookout. No, it wasn't barely his fault. I hope she's having a wrist. It must have been a horrid shock for her. She's having a lie down for half an hour. I wondered if I should call in the doctor. No, no, I don't think so. I shall be back this afternoon after lunch. Yes, Mrs. Lambert. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. What an extraordinary thing to have happened. Poor darling. Give her my best love and say I'll be back soon. I will, Mrs. Lambert. Oh, and Mrs. Vivi, yes? don't forget, not a word about my seeing Dr. Morell. Oh, no, of course not. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is everything all right, Mrs. Lambert? It's nothing serious, thank you. My niece escaped being crushed by the car in the garage. Oh, of course. Hey. But no bones broken. Oh, come, uh, let Dr. Morell know. Thank you. I, I must say, uh, this grows more worrying, Dr. Morell. It's bound to make Audrey very upset. If only you could come down and set her mind at rest. Uh, when do you suggest I should see her? Oh, would it be possible this evening? It's only an hour's run by car. Well, I could be down there by six o'clock. That would be wonderful of you, Doctor. How do you propose to explain my visit to your niece? Oh, I, I can make some excuse that I met you in London with an old friend of mine. That you're interested in haunted houses and that kind of thing. Very well, Mrs. Lambert. Uh, that's arranged. Then I'll show you out, Mrs. Lambert. Uh, goodbye, Dr. Uh, goodbye, uh, Mrs. Lambert. Good morning, Mrs. Lambert. Good morning. Uh, will you be accompanying Dr. Morell? Oh, yes, I shall be there. I always am. Oh, so we'll see you both later today. Yes. yes. I only hope my niece won't be difficult about it. Oh, now, I shouldn't worry too much over it. She'll be all right when Dr. Morell arrives. What a frightening thing to have happened to you, Audrey. Oh, it's all right, Aunt Edna. Luckily, I wasn't hurt. Oh, I wish you'd had a longer rest. You ought to have stayed in bed until tea time. I had quite a good sleep, as a matter of fact. None of those beastly dreams. Old houses are always more frightening at night. They creak and groan, and, and it's so much more quiet. I'd never noticed until this last week or two. I expect that's because you're excited about everything. Oh, I wish I didn't feel that I never will marry John. Oh, you mustn't say that, Audrey. You, you must stop talking that way. Just as if I know someone means to prevent it. Uh, listen, darling. I I've got something to tell you. What is it? You're not to be angry with me. I I'm sure I've done the right thing. No, of course I won't be angry with you. I lied to you about my reason for going to London this morning. What do you mean? I went to see someone about you. About me? Oh, a doctor, you mean? Oh, Aunt Darling, what use could that be? Well, he isn't an ordinary doctor, and he's not coming down just to give you some medicine. He's coming to look at the house. The house? After all, there are such things as haunted houses, and although I'm skeptical, this... This is a very old place, and there may be something to it. So I thought I'd ask this doctor to come down and have a look round. Yes, but even if it is haunted, if there is some, some poltergeist or whatever it is, what can this doctor do about it? His name is Dr. Morell. Oh, I've heard of him. Oh, he's quite an amazing person. He gives you such a terrific confidence in him from the very first moment you meet him. Oh, it's very sweet of you, Anne, to go to all this trouble. <laughs> all I'm thinking of is your happiness. 
And you're going to be happy, I know, with Johnny. I know I will, too. Once I'm married to him, I, I know I'll be safe. And that sounds like Evelyn. Evelyn! Is that you, Mother? I'm here with Audrey. Have you told her about Dr. Moreau? No, not yet. Oh, she'll be thrilled a bit. He sounds just her type. I don't think she'll stand much chance. There's a secretary, a Miss Frail. She'll be coming, too. Oh. Hello, Mother. Hello, Evelyn. Wasn't it ghastly about Audrey? What silly fool, eh? Oh, it wasn't his fault. I always said he was too young and inexperienced and too good looking. Oh, don't be so ridiculous, Evelyn. How did you get on in London, Mother? All right, thank you, dear. Guess who's coming to visit us this evening? I haven't a clue. Who? Great Dr. Morell, no less. Dr. Morell? I've heard about him. He was at that murder trial the other week. What on earth is he coming here for? I asked him to come and look at the house. Whatever for? Well, it's to do with Audrey, really. Well, what do you mean? The nightmares and dreams you've been having? Yes, Evelyn. Uh, perhaps there may be something odd about the house which is affecting Audrey. Haunted by some evil spirit. Well, it's madly old, and I expect violent things have taken place here. Isn't that supposed to be it? What, Evelyn? Reverberations. Sort of waves are given off when something violent happens and clings to the atmosphere for hundreds of years afterwards. Oh, how creepy. Mm, of course, I don't believe in it myself, but... Isn't that what you mean? Well, well, something like that. Anyway, that's what I went to see Dr. Morell about. Well, he could be, you know. Poor Audrey. He was very really understanding, and he's coming down to see if there's anything that can be done. What time will he be here? Oh, at about six. Oh, my hair looks awful. Oh. Darling, he's coming to see Audrey, not you. <laughs> Sounds very exciting. Oh, I'm sorry, Audrey. I know this must be horrible for you. It's all right, Evelyn. Perhaps he may be able to lift this, this shadow that seems to hang over me. There's the railway bridge ahead, Doctor. The village is the first turning on the right after that. Oh, thank you, Miss Frail. I had already impressed the route upon my mind from the map. Oh. You don't think, Dr. Morell, that, that there can be anything in this idea that Mrs. Lambert's niece is being haunted? I don't attach much importance to such a possibility. Uh, there will be some more prosaic explanation, no doubt. Doctor, what's that fan want? What, Miss Frail? There. See him at the side of the road. He's waving at us to stop. Do you think we should? I see no reason why not. Well, it's dangerous stopping to give strangers a lift on a lonely road. There may be an element of risk in it sometimes, I agree. Especially if one is driving alone. I know, it seems awfully mean. But in this case, as it happens, I'm I'm not alone. Uh, you are with me, my dear, Miss Frey. Oh, Dr. Morell. Mm, he's a bit strange looking, Dr. Morell. That awful black beard. You really must try to resist the impulse to judge by appearances. Thanks so much for stopping your car. Uh, can we give you a lift? Oh, yes, yes, please. Uh, where are you going? Uh, we're on our way to the village. Well, shall I get in the back? Oh, there's plenty of room in front. If I'm not squeezing you against your friend. Oh, I don't mind that. Uh, where shall we drop you? I, I don't know. Don't know? But you must know where you want to go. Well, that's just it. I don't. Where do you come from? Well, I don't know that either. I don't even know who I am. Oh, dear. You can't remember your identity at all? No, I can't. But how did you... Well, where did you... I suddenly found myself walking across the field. It was as if I'd been walking in my sleep and woken up. I didn't know where I was, who I was, where I'd come from, or, or where I wanted to go. I got to the side of the road and tried to stop one or two cars, but none of them did. And then you came along. And no means of identification on you? And nothing in your pocket? Only an ordinary pencil. I've got no money on me. There's only a half-empty packet of cigarettes and a box of matches. You mean you've completely lost your money? Well, I suppose it must be that. What are we better do, Doctor? Oh, you're a doctor? Yes. Uh, we're driving down here on a case, as a matter of fact. What do you think I'd better do, Doctor? Uh, that is a fairly simple matter. Uh, call at the nearest police station. Police? Have you any objection to that? I suppose not. Would you rather I didn't? Oh, no. Well, it's only that since I don't know who I am or anything, I also don't know what I've done. You mean you, you might have... Oh, dear. Exactly. For all you know, I might be a murderer on the run. Because you're suffering from what is probably a mild form of amnesia, it doesn't automatically mean that you are a criminal. No, Doctor. In any case, sir, that is for the police to find out. I suppose so. You would be the first to wish to satisfy yourself that you're not a fugitive from the law. Oh, uh, this is the turning for the village, Dr. Morell. I have already observed that. Okay. It isn't very far now, and, and there's bound to be a police station. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, it seems awful, doesn't it? Oh, but I'm sure Dr. Morell's right that it's the best thing. I agree. I don't see what else you can do. Oh, you 
feeling now, Audrey? Up to meeting Dr. Morell? I'm all right, Aunt Edna. It's six o'clock. He, he should be here. He may have lost his way. I think that's unlikely. He doesn't appear to be the sort of man to lose his way. Yes, he got delayed. Well, it's only just six. I think Evelyn can hardly wait for his arrival. That sounds as if it'll be them. I'm sure Evelyn will have rushed to answer the door. She'll take them into the front room. Good evening. Dr. Morella, Miss Ray. Good evening. Won't you please come in? I'm Evelyn Lambert, Mrs. Lambert's daughter. Come into the sitting room. Oh, what a wonderful old house it is. A bit too old, really, and much too big for us. Oh, come in here and sit down. Thank you. My mother will be here any minute. Would you like something, Sherry? Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. There's some cigarettes here. Oh, well, I don't smoke, thank you. Well, if you don't mind, I, I prefer to smoke these. Do you have them made specially for you? Well, I do, as a matter of fact. Well, I think it must be marvelous to have one's own cigarettes made. Have they any name? Le Sphinx. Le Sphinx. How appropriate. Just like yourself, Doctor, I'm sure. Enigmatic and inscrutable. <clears throat> Did you say that Mrs. Lambert knows? Uh, Evelyn. Oh, good evening, Doctor. Uh, good evening, Miss Phil. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Lambert. Uh, you met my daughter, Evelyn. Yes. I hope you didn't have any difficulty getting here. No, not at all. We, uh, we were delayed by having to call at the police station. Police? But what? The police, Dr. Morell, I don't understand. Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Lambert. It was only some man on the road. Do you mean an accident? Uh, no, no. He stopped us, and I learned he was suffering from a form of amnesia. I drove him to the police station. He will receive medical attention, and they'll find out who he is. What an extraordinary thing. Yes, it was rather strange. Ah, there's Audrey. Uh, Dr. Morell, this is my niece, Audrey Templeton. Uh, good evening. How do you do, Doctor? And this is Miss Frail, Dr. Morell's secretary. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Dr. Morell was just telling us that they met a man who'd lost his memory. You mean on the way here? Yes, just before we arrived at the village. Who was he? What did he look like? Audrey, why are you so interested? Because I... <gasps> oh, it's nothing... Seems a bit odd for someone to be wandering about like that. He was a man aged about 30, dark and wearing a beard. A beard? Oh, he's all right. We've taken him to the police station. It must be awful not to know who you are, or where you've come from, or anything about yourself. I can't imagine waking up and, and knowing that, that I didn't know who I was. Uh, would you like Audrey to show you over the house, Dr. Morell? Yes, of course. Will you come to Miss Fred? I'd love to. I was saying it's very rambling and much too big for Oh, us. I think it's a marvellous old house. I shall be sorry to leave it. I've been so very happy here. Haven't I, Aunt Edna? I'm glad. You've made us very happy. We shall all be sorry when you go, too. How sweet are you, Evelyn? Dr. Morell, will you come along? And Miss Frail. Thank you. This is my room, Doctor. Where last night you thought you saw someone who'd awakened you, as I understand from your aunt? Yes. Perhaps you'd like to describe exactly what happened. Well, I was asleep. And I found myself dreaming that someone was in the room. I woke up with a start. <laughs> Who is it? Who's there? I know it's someone. It's... Someone's there. They've opened the door. That's what woke me up. I must see who it was. Who's there? It's going downstairs. Audrey, what's the matter? Uh, I felt unsafe. Are you hurt? Oh, I, I think I'm all right. Someone came into my bedroom again. They woke me up. Oh, it couldn't have been anyone, darling. But it was someone. Aunt Edna, I know it you was. You must have been dreaming. I saw the door close behind them and I, I rushed out. Oh, it was only a horrid nightmare. No, it wasn't. Really, it wasn't. I heard them going downstairs and I, I ran after them and then... Something caught hold of my hand. I'm sure you were imagining it. Oh, I know someone's trying to do me harm. Audrey, dear. They're trying to drive me out of my mind. Okay, back to bed, Dr. Morell. I went to sleep again. Oh, what a horrid business for you. You slept undisturbed for the rest of the night? Yes. Perhaps you would show me where you fell on the stairs? Uh, yes, yes, of course. It's just as if some hand had gripped me by the ankle. It was... Two or three stairs down, Doctor. Just about here. Oh, what a wonderful wide staircase. Well, it's quite dark, even in this light. I shall require my pencil torch. Oh, what are you looking for, Doctor? It was about here you fell, Miss Templeton. Yes, and, uh, and it felt as if some cold hand had gripped you. All right, Miss Frail. Hmm. I see. What is it, Dr. Morell? What have you found? The impression round this oak upright uh, could have been made by a piece of cord cutting into it. What do you mean, Dr. Morell? Um... Now, where could the other end have been fixed? Somewhere in the panelling over here? Ah, oh, yes. 
The mark of a hook could have been screwed in. Dr. Morell, what are you suggesting, Doctor? Uh, precisely this, Miss Templeton. It was no ghostly hand that gripped your ankle and precipitated you downstairs, but a piece of cord stretched across with deliberate purpose. <laughs> Is that it's someone in this house? There would appear to be no other explanation. Oh, but this is terrible. Oh, you look shaken, Miss Templeton. Sit on your bed. It is a bit of a shock. Miss Frail? Yes, Doctor. Uh, would you open the door and wait outside to warn us of anyone's approach? Yes, Doctor. I would like us to remain in your room, Miss Templeton, whilst you answer one or two questions. But there's something I'd like to tell you. It's about that man you met on, on the road tonight. The man who said he'd lost his memory. Why should you be interested in him? Because... Because I... I know this may sound strange to you, Dr. Morell, but I... Invariably, this prefaces a description of some occurrence with a perfectly logical explanation. You see, three years ago, I was going to marry someone else. Your aunt mentioned it to me. Oh, I see. Then you know that he was killed up in Scotland. Well, I understood that he disappeared while mountain climbing on the Isle of Skye and that his body was never recovered. I fully believed him to be dead. That's what they said, and that he got lost in the mist and he'd never be found, but... but... I'm listening, Miss Templeton. Lately... I wondered if he's trying to... If his spirit's trying to stop me from marrying Johnny. I don't quite follow. Well, Richard was so terribly jealous. Your aunt mentioned that, too. I she also mentioned that she feels happier I'm marrying someone else. Someone steady and reliable like Johnny Fitzgerald. But are you suggesting that this threat is reaching you from beyond the grave? I was wondering that, yes. Whatever one's views may be on the subject, I cannot believe that such a futile emotion as jealousy survives after death. Well, then I thought it must be ridiculous and... And then I wondered if perhaps Richard wasn't dead at all. That he was alive, and for some reason or other he's hiding from me. And that... And that you think he may be this man I encountered on the way here? It did go through my mind. I made the point that it is someone in this house who must be responsible for what has occurred. Uh, I'd forgotten that. But why can you be so sure? Uh, what time was the incident which awoke you from your sleep last night? Oh, about 12 o'clock. Who would have means of access into the house from outside? No one. Everything's up before we go to bed. Precisely. I see what you mean. A lonely old house. It is a routine matter to bolt and bar the doors and windows against a possible intruder, uh, unless you suspect some secret passage. Oh, I've lived here ever since I was a child. I'd certainly have found it. But there's only Aunt Edna and Evelyn and Mrs. Veasy, the housekeeper. What about the chauffeur who reversed the car into you? Well, he lives in the village. Well, that disposes of him. But to think that either my aunt or Evelyn or Mrs. Veasy... I... Ludicrous. The facts are that you have not dreamt these things, nor have you suffered from hallucinations. Uh, someone was in your room last night. Uh, someone caused you to fall so that you might have broken your neck. Uh, someone is determined to prevent your wedding on Saturday. Uh, what is it? The cupboard. It's always doing that by itself. That would appear to be your wedding dress hanging there. Yes, it only arrived this morning. Doctor. Uh, what is it, Miss Fraser? Oh, the telephone's rung in the hall. Mrs. Lambert answered it. It sounds as if it's for you. Dr. Morell, the telephone. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Lambert. The doctor's just coming. I'll go downstairs and answer it. Well, I'll come. Uh, this is Dr. Morell here. Good evening, Victor. I see. Thank you very much for letting me know. Goodbye. Oh, was that the police station, Doctor? What could they want? It's the first time we've ever had the police ring us up. I'm sorry if they disturbed you. It's rather thrilling. Uh, you may be interested to learn they have ascertained uh, the identity of the man with the lost memory. Who is it? Uh, no one you know, Miss Frail. Anyone we know, Dr. Morell? Yes, is it, Doctor? Oh! Oh! Audrey! We left her upstairs. Quick, Miss Frail! Miss Templeton. Oh, are you all right? Oh, horrible. Oh, Audrey, my darling, what's happened? God, Edna. What's wrong? The dress. Look, the dress. Your wedding dress has been slashed to pieces. Cut the door open by itself. The way it does sometimes while Dr. Moreau was here. And when he went downstairs to the phone, I was about to close the cupboard again and, and the dress looked as if it had been moved. I took it out to look at it, and, and, and I saw the slashes, and, oh, the shock, it was horrible. He made me scream. Oh, I... Your nerves are on edge, darling. Oh, that lovely dress, what a dreadful thing to have done. What happened? I heard someone scream. It's all right, Mrs. Veasy. Was it you, my dear? Yes, I'm afraid it was. Uh, this is Mrs. Veasy, our housekeeper, doctor. Good evening, sir. Uh, Miss Frey. Good evening, miss. Uh, good evening. What made you give that awful scream, my dear? <gasps> 
Your wedding dress? Whatever's happened? I don't know. I know someone in this house hates me. Somebody means to stop me marrying Johnny. And it's one of you, one of you who hates Audrey, me. Audrey, my it's dear. True. I've always thought it unlucky to put on your wedding dress before the day. Put on your wedding dress? What do you mean? I saw you this afternoon when I came past your room. You saw me? It must have been you. But it wasn't. But I saw you. I could have said something. Only I was in a hurry. Uh, did you actually see Miss Templeton's face? You sure it was Audrey? I don't know that I actually saw her face. But who else could it have been? Yes, Mrs. Lambert. Who else could it have been? What are you looking at me for, Dr. Morell? Well, as your niece has just said, someone in this house has deliberately attempted to harm her. Uh, someone means to prevent her wedding taking place at all costs. But why should I? Aunt Edna! Because whoever tried this dress on, and whom Mrs. Beasy mistook for your niece, happens to be fair-haired. He has a fair strand of hair clinging to the veil. But this is monstrous. You are the only one peasant with fair hair. Your daughter is dark. Your niece, Auburn, and Mrs. Beasy is grey-haired. Who else could it be? No, no, it wasn't, Mother. I did it. I hated her because she was going to marry the man I love. Evening. Don't try and stop me out of my way, Mrs. Beasy. Oh, oh stop her, Dr. Morell. She's got away. Ah, you won't stop me. You won't stop Evening, me. Evening, come back. She's gone up to the roof. Dr. Morell, she'll do something terrible. She'll kill herself. Does that way lead to the roof? Yes, yes. All right. You won't stop me, Dr. Morell. You won't stop me. Try not to, Miss Frail. It won't help her. Do you think she stands a chance of recovery? Uh, 50 50, they say, the hospital. Uh, we shall know when we get back to London. Uh, the surgeon is telephoning me from the hospital. Oh, to think she bottled up that jealousy all that time over the first man and, and then again over the other one. I strongly suspect that her mother had some inkling of her daughter's state of mind. Then you were bluffing when you said it was her, Mrs. Beasy, or trying on the wedding dress? I already felt certain in my mind that it must be the daughter, a motive and opportunity. I calculated I might persuade her to confess by accusing her mother. But it was a fair hair I saw you holding it. It was one I had removed from my shoulder, my dear Miss Frail. One of Audrey Templeton? No, oh, Miss Frail, one of yours. Uh, you may recall leaning somewhat close to me when I drove that amnesia case to the police station. <laughs> That was another adventure in a BBC series featuring Ernest Dudley's famous character, Dr. Morell, and, of course, his secretary, Miss Frail. The artists taking part were Dr. Morell, Cecil Parker, Miss Frail, Sheila Sim, Audrey Lambert, Selwyn Morgan, Evelyn Lambert, Mary Law, Mrs. Lambert, Alwyn Brooks, Mrs. Veazey, Peggy Thorpe Bates, commercial traveller, Trevor Martin. This recorded programme was produced by Leslie Bridgemont. Thank you.